two dimensional transient. If I run this while I think about it. So this is what a two dimensional transient plot would look like. I believe we have, I didn't finish my commenting here, or the inputs, that's my fault, I forgot. Uh, equal spacing in both directions, they don't have to be, you can change that. Shadow nodes are along the horizontal edges with no flux boundary conditions. Uh, what is the flux? Anybody? We've all had heat transfer. Flux is some variable per time, right? So heat flux would be energy per time. Now if you have no heat flux, that means that at the boundary you can set the, I'll show you what I did. You can set, if you set a shadow node on the outside of the domain boundary, then you can set the, your node equal to the shadow node, which Trigveson told me that that was a bad way to do it yesterday. So that's how I do it here. Take it with a grain of salt at this point, because I didn't fix it. So we do our clear all, close all, Define the input variables. So we have our length in both directions. Once again, I'll use L and I and J instead of X and Y. I'll actually draw it out on a piece of paper and have the coordinates in I and J and then write out the code accordingly. This sets the number of the number of nodes in the <coughs> I direction. And this sets the number of nodes in the J direction so that there's equal spacing for each direction, right? Because the directions aren't the same. So you take the fraction and then multiply it by the, the number of nodes in the, in the i direction. The, delt, the spacing is the number of, is the distance divided by n minus 1, right? Because you have to subtract 1 for the correct spacing. And you only do that for one direction because they're the same. I set the initial temperature of the hot side and initial temperature of the cold side on line 37, 38. I'm doing a bad job of doing line numbers. I'm sorry, I apologize. Temperature one is the temperature of the boundary uh, or of the cold side. That may be a solid state boundary. Time two is the stopping time. Set the initial time equal to zero and the time step equal to 0 0.01. I have the properties for steel and the properties for copper, so I believe I'll look these up in Drysdale or the SFP handbook, depending upon which one. You can either use a value of alpha that was stated or calculate it yourself from these other properties, so I went ahead and calculated it. Alpha being the diffusivity. So I generated an initial an initial matrix. So what I did here is I set this makes uh, the array go from one to the number of nodes plus two because there's a shadow node on each side for the i direction and from one to the number of nodes in the j direction. Does anybody use shadow nodes besides Joel? I don't particularly want to try and teach them because I'm not really good at them. I just use them. We learned them in 5.15. I haven't been using them for that long. Basically, it's a, it's a way so that you can use the heat transfer coefficient of the, of the material with the flux on the boundary. So you say, there's this much energy coming into this fake node, and then I can use the heat transfer coefficient to determine how much energy is coming into the actual boundary without having a separate set of equations that include the, the uh, convection coefficient, right? So you can use the flux without knowing the actual convection coefficient. And if you want to know more about that, I would look it up in a book. Or ask Joel, because he's probably better at it than me. The Fourier number and the B number, heat transfer, these heat transfer equations, the way they're formulated, they have a uh, stability requirement. It has to be less than 0.25 in two dimensions and 0.5 in one dimension. And then there's this equation has to be satisfied for 
uh, two dimensions. It doesn't have one in one dimension. We all know what the Fourier number and the B number is, correct? We've all used those before, non-dimensional numbers of whatnot. I don't know if it's the B out number or the B number. Me and Dempsey say it different ways, but he is smarter than me, so he's probably right. So this is the actual calculation loop. It goes from line 75 to 94. And I'm going to draw some more because it keeps me entertained. I like blue. So this outside while loop is iterating through, iterating through time. We have two loops iterating through space in the, the i and j direction. We have two boundary conditions with j equal to 1 and j equal to the, no the last number of nodes and this internal, uh, the internal heat transfer equation, right? So can anybody tell me why I don't have four, four sets of conditional statements like this? Because I have four corners, right? Why do I only have two? Time. And this would be because I talked about the shadow nodes for the for the, the no flux boundary condition or a flux boundary condition if it's defined in, in any manner. That allows me to use this this type of condition at that boundary at that boundary state because I will I use the no flux condition to define the temperature at the at the at the wall. Mm, we're going Please go. All right. So this is where I reset the boundary condition for the for that. You basically just take the temperature at at the at the edge and set it equal to the the internal temperature. So say you have if this is your boundary, you'd have a shadow node here. You have a set of shadow nodes. And so you know there's no flux going across here. This is equal to zero, right? So you take the temperature at these nodes. Let's see, we have nodes here. And we know the nodes going, the temp, there's no temperature difference between here and here. So these two, we know are the same because there's no flux. So you just take this temperature and set it equal to this temperature. And that adjusts the temperature every time the, the time is increased. Does that make sense? I can use a nod. Yes. OK. Class participation. Ali told me to get class participation. But I heard he told you to ask hard questions. All right. Moving on. Surface. Uh, this is a this is another way to plot three dimensional is use the surface command. It's a little trickier than plot three. Uh, plot three because you have two, you have an x and y array, and then a two dimensional variable for the the surface. So you have to you have to give it the coordinates and a variable with two-dimensional coordinates in it. So this tells it to plot with actual distance as opposed to the nodal coordinate. So what I told you before on the other plot was that this was, this went from one, two, three, four for the, the one that I said plotted badly. It uses the, the iteration number for the plot spacing. This one actually uses the real xy distance that have been calculated from the the discretization of the domain. We calculated the delta x and we discretized the domain. I didn't probably point out that loop. I'll go back here in a second. Then we use that discretization to actually use that as the axes. So that's a better way to do it. So your plots come out right no matter what the spacing is. And so this temperature, it's actually using the, the iteration numbers here to correspond to the, the area numbers. I really like being able to draw on this. It's really handy. 
good for explaining things. Um, there should be a discretization loop somewhere. Where did I do it? I did it at the end, yeah. So I actually just did it at the end here. Here. Um, just because I, that's the only reason it's done is for plotting purposes and for if you're going to use it somewhere else. That's the only reason I did it. Any questions about that? So the, the heat transfer equations come from a heat transfer book, or you can find them yourself from the finite difference approximation of the Taylor series. You can, they're not that hard to derive. These are, these are low order uh, equations. The higher order equations get more complicated. And then you simply code them in a three loop system. It's kind of the bread and butter of, of what I was trying to get across, is this right here. Um, because Adriana already does a basic MATLAB class, so that's not what I was trying to show. I didn't want to step on any toes. But this, if you can understand this three loop structure, then you can pretty much code 90% of the problems, maybe 99% of the problems that you're going to want to do without going to a commercial code, right? So once you start getting into three, three-dimensional heat transfer, three-dimensional stresses, it starts getting more complicated, errors start accumulating faster. So commercial codes are, e are easier to use. But for simple problems, it's pretty easy to write your own little script and you can solve problems relatively quickly. So this, if these three, if there are all no flux boundaries, then you can obviously just use one set of equations. If none of them are no flux boundaries, you can use multiples of these. Um, and then you just iterate through your time domain, or your, your, your space domain, inside of the time domain. Does that make sense? Does the discretization make sense? Does everybody understand that, how you take a function and break it up into pieces? Sweet. I'm glad. All right. I think. Oh, I wanted to point out one other thing. This is why I made notes so I didn't forget. This line, this line looks like it's junk, but it, uh, the purpose is to, the purpose is to set what I plot. This temperature e variable is what I plot, and this is smaller than the actual temperature uh, variable because I cut out the, the shadow nodes because we don't actually want to see what they are because they don't actually exist. It's just a way to handle the noflux boundary. Um, so that's what that line does, by the way. All right. So what else did I have in my slide? We're going to go to.